But as we wait, a little breaking news now first here on CNN out of the State Department. Two senior administration officials saying the four top State Department manager officials were all fired by the Trump administration as part of an effort to what sources called an effort to clean house at the State Department. Let's get to Elise Lavitt, our diplomatic correspondent. Elise, explain what happened here. Well, John, you know, as typical with any transition, uh, all top officials, the heads of all these agencies um, and bureaus are asked to submit resignations. Well, we understand all of those top officials in the management departments of the State Department. We're talking the Undersecretary of Management, the long-serving Pat Kennedy, um, the Assistant Secretaries of Consular Affairs, Administration, and the Office, the Director of the Office of Foreign Missions, that's embassies here in the United States by uh, international countries, um, were all uh, those resignations were accepted. They were sent letters by the White House this week that their service was no longer required. And officials are telling me it's very common when these resignations are submitted, these officials are, you know, asked to stay on a few months until their replacements are confirmed. We're talking about 150 years of combined institutional knowledge by all of these officials. And, John, it's really leaving a gaping hole in the State Department's management structure as the new Assistant Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, is expected to uh, take office next week. Elise Lavitt with the breaking news. And, Elise, is the Rex Tillerson, is, are his deputies ready to come in with him if he's confirmed next week? Rex Tillerson has not named a deputy. The White House has not said that they have a specific candidate in mind. My understanding is that uh, Mr. Tillerson is not coming with anybody from his office at Exxon. He's really coming by himself. So he's really looking to these top officials at the State Department to help him get acclimated and help him start running the building. And not just in the management department, in some of these regional bureaus. Um, Assistant Secretary for Europe, for instance, Victoria Newland. Um, also submitted her resignation. That resignation was accepted. So he's really coming in at a bit of a disadvantage. You know, look, there are very good deputies in the department who are carrying on the mantle. These are all career people who have served in a long time. But he is coming in with a gaping hole at the top leadership of his department, John. Elise Lava with the breaking news for us. And as we come back to the panel again, we're waiting the President of the United States to come out and speak in Philadelphia. Uh, I think you said it best a few moments ago, protocol schmodocol, uh, in the sense that uh, from the Trump perspective, I think they view these people, even though some of whom have served in prior administrations, uh, holdovers from the Obama administration. They don't want to do things the way we want to do them. So we would rather deal with a little bit of chaos, and a little bit of unpredictability, and probably have some things fall through the cracks uh, than have the old guard stay on board. Right. They are far more comfortable with that than the rest of Washington is. And I think that's right. part of why he was elected. Uh, in some agencies, I think you're going to see places where it's like, okay, maybe all that personnel didn't matter quite as much as that personnel thought they did. Somewhere like state, I think continuity is more important. Uh, but this is going to be a way of doing things. And I would add as a cautionary note, the part where the social media campaigns start burn booking the president as he becomes the president with their <laughs> tweets and whatnot, I don't think is particularly helpful for that transition right. when we're dealing with somebody who says protocol schmotocol. But I think we have to keep in mind here that, I mean, in the case of Patrick Kennedy at state, he was appointed to that position by George Bush and stayed on throughout Obama's, uh, Obama's presidency. Some of these other um, officials who resigned were responsible for essentially the safety and security of U.S. diplomats abroad and consulates and embassies abroad. These are actually real positions where you need actual leadership. And, and maybe there are people waiting in the wings. We don't know yet. But these are not jobs that can just go by the wayside. There's got to be a plan to keep the trains running on time when it comes to, uh, you know, the safety of U.S. As public servants working internationally. And as we await the president, this transition <laughs> period has been rocky. It's a little bumpy. Some people say, how can you not leave those people on? Other people say, you were sent in to break up and change Washington, disrupt. One of the other conversations as we await the president of the United States is he said repeatedly during the campaign uh, that he wanted to bring back waterboarding, that he thought it was an effective tactic. Now he says his defense secretary, General Mattis, and his CIA director, former Congressman Pompeo, they have told him they don't need this and he'll probably listen to them. But again, this is one of the issues that came up at this congressional retreat. They're saying, Mr. President, please Please don't take us off a sidetrack on this conversation. But listen to the president last night in that ABC interview saying, I'm not convinced not to do this. As far as I'm concerned, we have to fight fire with fire. Now, with that being said, I'm going with General Mattis. I'm going with my secretary because I think Pompeo is going to be phenomenal. I'm going to go with what they say. But I have spoken as recently as 24 hours ago 
with people at the highest level of intelligence, and I asked them the question, does it work? Does torture work? And the answer was yes, absolutely. Um, again, we're getting the verbal, uh, the oral tradition here. We're telling, we're sitting around the campfire asking everybody what they think. Look, there's been, a, as far as I can tell, there's been a couple of reports on this. We had the, the uh, heavily redacted torture report that there were years of fighting between Feinstein's office, the State okay. Department, and the Pentagon on. This is not new stuff, folks. What you are watching is a president of the United States who has, frankly, not done a ton of homework on this stuff, learning while he's on the job, and largely learning not by reading about it, but by sitting down with people in a room and asking them questions. And it seems sometimes, and this is not my opinion, this is opinions from people who work with him, um, that the last person that, that spoke to him is at times the most influential. It's banned in the Army Field Manual. Congress has said it's illegal. His, his uh, nominees, whether it's Jeff Sessions, Mike Pompeo, General Mattis, have all said during their hearings that they don't think it works, they, don't, they would not advocate for it. My question is, what happens when or if there's an attack? on the United States. I, I don't know. It, that, 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 that's a great question. What is the new administration? Does it try to change policy then? Uh, what we've seen the last several days, and I don't think this matters two months, three months, four months from now, but a little sense of annoyance from the Speaker of the House and the Senate majority, that they keep getting asked about this, and they keep saying, this is settled. It's against the law. It's not going to happen. Well, and the, the good news, I think, for those who are against this possible policy changes, nobody's going to accuse General Mattis of being insufficiently tough on right. terrorists. And so I think that's a really nice backup for Trump to have if he decides to come out with no change. Well, I think Trump, you know, if he listens to General Mattis, m maybe we'll be, you know, wait, maybe that's where he'll be. But I don't, I didn't get the sense that he was sort of deciding who he was really going to listen to. What if he gets conflicting advice? How is he going to make that decision? He hasn't really laid out his decision making process. And as Glenn said, he's not consuming information on his own. He's asking for advice. And maybe it's the last person who talks to him. Maybe it's not. I think for, for people who work in government, for the American people watching this, Right. There's got to be a sense of confusion about right. where this whole thing is going to end up. And you're watching. We've been waiting. The president of the United States is at that hotel preparing to speak any moment now to a Republican strategy conference. Big questions about his agenda going forward. The British Prime Minister, Theresa May, will be in the same room this afternoon.